Welcome everyone. This is a remarkable webinar because we've got so many people who are interested in starting up their own 23 Things group and we just want to congratulate all of you for putting your hand up uh, to be a group leader. It's just a remarkable thing. Um, we've got people listening in from Manitoba, from Maine and from New Zealand. We've got people from all over Australia. We've got people from universities, from government agencies from um, medical research institutes. So it's, it's just a phenomenally amazing, broad and deep community group. So well done to all of you. So Jerry, I will pass over to you now because Jerry's just going to do a very quick roundup on <laughs> what's the difference between the webinars, the community catch-ups, and meet up because we've had a lot of questions about this and as community group leaders I think this is something that you're going to be asked. Hi yep. everybody and welcome. Great to see so many here and I've chatted with some of you and emailed quite a number of you uh, and it's, it's great that we've got to this point of bringing this community of people together. Uh, as Karen said, I'm just going to kick off by explaining a little bit about the differences between the various um, communication channels that we have. Um, hopefully you've all now seen a new and improved um, website for ANS but also for the 23 things. What we'll be using the website for is really our primary mechanism for communicating the latest news as well as publishing our things. So as we've indicated previously, we will progressively um, release things uh, roughly on a weekly basis and we will be releasing them through the ANS website. And I guess I'll just quickly show you, we've got thing one already published so that people if they're interested can have a, a bit of a sneak peek before our kickoff webinar next week. But each one will have a similar sort of format. The other communication mechanism that we'll be using is Meetup. Many of you will have already um, signed up to join in with Meetup. This is essentially what we'll be using purely for discussion of things. So it's really where we have our sort of interactive virtual component of the program. What we will have is for each thing, I'll scroll down to the bottom, each thing has three streams, getting started, learn more and challenge me. So that we've got a stream of activities for people sort of regardless of where they are in terms of their exposure and experience with research data. For each of those activities there will be a separate discussion board. I've only set up the first few discussion boards, um, I'll set up more as we get closer didn't seem to be a lot of point in setting up a lot of empty discussion boards. But the idea here is that it's a forum where you can actually post questions, start or contribute to a discussion, answer a question. It's that sort of virtual component. And we've decided to have a discussion board for each stream of activity so that it's sort of easy for people to keep track of what's happening in the particular activity that they're interested in or that they're doing. What you can see here too is that at the completion of each thing, people are able to claim a Credly dig digital badge and Karen will be talking a little bit more about rewards and motivation a bit later on. We envisage that for people running community groups, you may or may not choose to use Meetup. If you're actually having quite robust discussions within your own groups, uh, particularly if you're perhaps a work group where you've got the opportunity to also talk about how you might implement some of these things that you're learning, you know, how this might work within your organisation, you may not necessarily want to also be actively involved in Meetup. Although what we suggest might be a good idea is if one or two people in your group, perhaps on a rotating basis, do contribute or keep an eye on the meetup discussion boards so that you can, in, within your group, know what's happening in other parts of the program, what other people are raising as questions and issues, and a way, I guess, of being in touch 
with what's happening outside of your own group. So that's really Meetup. Quite simply, it will just be the mechanism for um, allowing discussion of things and the individual activities around things. The other thing we'll be doing is having catch-up webinars and the dates for those are on the handout that Karen's put in the handout box. These will be similar to what we're running now but will be for anybody who wants to come along and in this sort of forum raise a question, comment on how your group or how you're going with things, sort of report back more broadly on how activities are going within your group or uh, indeed for individuals who aren't part of a group. So part of what we want to use the webinars for is to give people a forum for asking questions and discussion, discussing things where they may not be part of a group because obviously not everybody's going to be able to be part of a group. So again, for those of you who are running groups, you may or may not wish to participate in the catch-up webinars, but again, I think probably quite a nice idea is to again, perhaps on a rotating basis, have one or two of your members come along to the webinars, contribute back what's been happening in your group, ask questions that may not have been resolved within your group and just hear what others are saying and doing. Uh, but it's really up to you what's likely to work for your group and you know, we're ever conscious of course that we need to help people manage the time that they spend on 23 things. We've sort of put it together with the idea that it should take participants no more than an hour a week to um, complete the thing and ultimately complete the program. So that's an overview of the website, Meetup and the webinars. They're all there now that you can look at and be part of and you, some of you I know have also contributed to our Getting to Know You discussion board which is fantastic and we're really encouraging people to introduce themselves and, and why they're you know, wanting to get involved in this program. So Karen, are there any questions on this one? Yes, there's one question. Um, is each level one hour or do we, do we do each level or pick and choose? Definitely pick and choose. So I mean, some people might decide that for a particular thing they want to do the getting started, you know, the sort of the introductory activity. For other things, they might decide that they already know a little bit about, say, metadata, so they're going to do something that's a bit more challenging in that activity. So you don't need to stick in a particular stream. You can pick and choose depending on your interest and, you know, whether you've had some exposure to the topic previously. And some people, may decide that they're actually not going to even do all 23 things, that some things are much more interesting to them or relevant to their work or their interests and they'll sort of cherry pick what works for them. Um, so there's no compulsion to stick in a particular stream or even to do all 23 things. It, it is self-directed, so it's really up to people to get out of it what they need and want and obviously put into it what they need and want as well. Jerry, while we're there, would you like to um, just show the thing number one? Yep, so each thing will have a similar format where we've got these three levels, getting started, learn more and challenge me. Each thing will have its own page here on the 23 Things website. All of these are blank really aside from thing one. So we have the getting started um, thing which you know, is intended to be introductory. What we are attempting to do with each thing is, is have something people can go away and do, you know, not just necessarily a reading exercise, but something that you can actually do a little bit hands-on. Then at the bottom of each activity description, there's links off to the relevant discussion board in Meetup. So if you want to go straight from here, and um, post some quick comments or questions to meet up, you can do that directly from here. And there's also a link to register for the catch up, the next catch up webinar. So here we've got the learn more activity. Again, it's in the same sort of format, a set of activities to do, something to think about, and some ideas to share or discussion starters. So each activity will have some sort of prompt for something that you could share either via Meetup or use to frame a discussion within your group. 
and then um, challenge me is intended to be a little bit higher level for people perhaps a bit more exposed to managing research data. This does start off fairly softly initially, but by sort of thing four, we're really getting into some of the hands-on, more technical challenges. So for people that are keen to dig into XML, a little bit of coding, data cleansing, that sort of thing, those sorts of activities ramp up a little bit later in the program. So we sort of start off gently and build as the program evolves. Jerry, do you want to talk about the rollout of the things? Because you've said that there's only one thing currently uh, you can see. Well, what about yep. the others? So what will happen is on March 1, after a very big uh, kickoff webinar, we'll be uh, publishing thing two and three, and then we will publish a thing on a weekly basis, so that there'll always be the opportunity to be looking a little bit ahead to seeing what comes next. The intent with doing it this way, and with, I guess, appreciate your feedback on this approach as well, was that it would then keep people roughly together in terms of discussion, through meetup, perhaps people tweeting, discussing it in your groups, that people are roughly kept together and the discussions then are relevant. So we've not got some people still discussing thing one while others have jumped on to discussing thing 13 or 14. So we'll always have three things available to be working on. So if you want to sort of jump a little bit ahead or you firstly, if you've had some time off and you want to come back, you'll be able to do that. And then as they are published, they'll stay open. We won't be closing them off again. The idea is then at the end of the program, we can have some mechanism by which we can sort of zip this up as a package for others if they want to adapt it. And particularly for those folks from other locations, you may wish to reuse this idea, but tweak it for your location with some local examples and, and things like that. So we want this at the end of the program to really be a resource that others can pick up and use in the same way that we picked up the great work done by Michael Witt and his team and have reused it for our purposes. We'd really love to see other people pick up this idea and run with it and adapt it to make it work for them. Okay, thank you very much, Jerry. I'm just sending um, a reminder about the Twitter hashtag. Oh, so, yeah, thank you. There it is. So we, we have had a little bit of activity, uh, and I do encourage people. Hopefully, this might be one mechanism by which you can let people know what's happening in your group, source new members, you know, identify interest in new members, and that sort of thing. So yes, please do use the Twitter handle. For those of you who haven't seen the handouts box before. If you have a look down, there's a handouts box and there are two handouts. One of them is a, just a two-page crib sheet, I guess, for community leaders such as yourself. The section that we're doing now is just about the community groups. And they they look, they're all going to take a different form. We've got some amazingly good ideas. If you would like to just put in the chat box how you are thinking about running your group, what I can do at the end of this webinar is I can pull all those that information out and I can send it out to everyone so that everyone's got some, oh, I might try that, might try that. The main thing is it's got to be sustainable for you. Why did they pick 23 things? That's an awful lot of things and it's going to be hard for you to maintain your enthusiasm as well as keeping the enthusiasm going for others. So keep it simple, nothing too elaborate, call for help. Others will be more than happy to give you a hand uh, wherever they can. So in point number three at the bottom of the first page, you can just see a few simple ideas that we've heard about so far. Some people are meeting each week and doing their thing together over lunch or over morning tea or whatever and then having a brief discussion there and then that's it, done. Others, are each person does their own thing and then they come together at a time that the group chooses. And then we've got a lot of the groups are, and I'll just show you the, the community groups that we've got so far. And So I, I guess if you think of the community groups as a little bit like a training exercise but more based on discussion and getting the group together to form a community where people are comfortable if they sort of confess, I don't know what a 
a DOI is and I don't or I don't understand thing number three or whatever the, the issue is, really getting people and you may find that some unlikely leaders emerge. Perhaps you've got somebody who's not particularly in a, in a um, high level position but they're really passionate about data and you may find that they're the ones doing the, the challenge me list every week and they're the ones leading the, the discussion. So look out for leaders within your groups. If we move down now to point number four and this is in the handout box, tips for maintaining motivation. I guess the first point I've got there is really critical. 23 things is many, many, many things. Um, internally at ANS we've started referring it to it as 23 million things as we discover more and more things that we, we would love to do or want to do. There'll be good intentions, people will drop out, people will get distracted, busy, some people will start off all enthusiastic and then, you know, other life will take over, they may come back. It's, it's not you personally, it's a huge commitment and I guess I've listed there four things that you might want to think about. Uh, so rewards, think about credly badges. One group we know is going to have a leaderboard up in the staff room and as people do their things they're going to tick them off to get a bit of you know competition going. Um, think about certificates. Now we at ANS can only provide a participation certificate because we don't know if people have done anything or not but it might be actually better coming from your director or your executive, your university librarian, your um, somebody within your group who's, you know, who would be pleased to know about how many staff have done it. Keeping the buzz, don't forget lots of you know, provide lots of buzz around um, sending things out, maybe in even your, your group newsletters. Oh, you know, so and so has finished all 23 things, or we've got 50 people starting, or 20 people starting 23 things. Wish them all the best, and you know, ask them about it. Create communities of practice and support. You can see there's four ideas there that you might want to take on board for some things that you want to do. But for me, the most important one is celebrate. It's an exciting thing to do. It's a community thing to do. It's fantastic. So. Think about the way that your group wants to celebrate. Some of you are going to be champagners, some of you are going to be cups of tea, some of you are going to be just coming together on a regular basis. But whatever it is, it's really important that there is some, you know, group, yes, we've done it. And the last one, keeping in touch, if there's anything more that we can do, please, for you in particular, you community leaders, send us a message and say, oh, can you put this up on the website? Can you change this? Can you add this? And we're ha more than happy to do it. We'd also love to hear from you at the end of the program to provide some feedback. There's already three papers now going into world conferences, ALIA in South Australia and Research Data Alliance both in Tokyo and in Denver. Uh, later this year and people are really interested. The Japanese have been looking at what we've been doing and they're taking Michael Witt's American idea and also creating a special one for Japan. And if you do get stuck, send us an email. Contact at, at ANS is fine, but either to Jerry or Sue Cook or myself or Susanna, any of us, and we'll, we'll more than happily give you a hand. So is there anybody who got anything that they'd like to comment about what they're going to be doing with their group? There's a number of people have put some things in the, the question pod. A question from Vanessa, she says, is there a hashtag for community group leaders? E.g. <laughs> thing O's, <laughs> thing organisers. I like it, Vanessa. <laughs> so that, that could be something that we'll set up as well. Just some ideas, one group, each person does their own thing, then, then invited fortnightly to the community group for an afternoon tea and a chat with local experts who will provide local context. For example, staff from copyright, research ethics, integrity, grant, research ID, etc. So thanks very much Jennifer and Peter. Another one, staff will work through their things individually, will meet as a group for each catch up webinar followed by a discussion. Another group, make a staff meeting at the same time each week. Jerry, would you like to chip in there with anything? I just thought it was might be worth mentioning too that our community groups have formed around different geographic locations. So, you know, anybody in the Newcastle area, anybody in the Melbourne area, so not sort of 
constrained to a particular organisation. Some groups are across the whole organisation, so anybody in University X can join, and then others are within a, a work group, so a library team or some other sort of team. So there's all sorts of groups that are forming, I guess, and, and I think that will mean that they will run a little bit differently depending on whether you're a fairly small, tight work group or whether you're opening this up to across a whole university mm -hmm. or a whole geographic area where you're going to get people from perhaps public libraries, school libraries, university libraries, you know, a whole a whole bunch of sort of areas that um, are going to have different different opinions and different exposures to research data. If you can see the screen, um, I've just pulled up those in Perth. You can see ones for Murdoch University staff, Curtin, uh, WA Health, and w University of Western Australia library staff, and then Anthea at Netherlands has uh, she's any participants in the Perth area who'd like to come along. So there's a whole range of different things. If there's anything on that page you'd like to add or change, just uh, let any of us know. If anybody's got anything they want to add or update, um, mm. just let me know. Um, one group is going to set up a Yammer group to share experiences and questions. And um, a comment from Nancy, we have no idea how things will go in the US. We'll need to do a bit of brainstorming to figure out how to communicate. It's a bit like Hobart. Wagga and Kalgoorlie all trying to get together. So congratulations Nancy on your knowing of Wagga is actually a place. Frances is just asking, Jerry, could you say a bit more about the badges? In and we tried to work out what we could do to sort of reward and provide some motivation for participants. It's actually quite challenging for us because we actually don't know when people are going to be finished things and we're not in a position to sort of keep a record of who's doing what. Mm. So what we've done is implemented Credly badges, which is just a simply a, a digital badge um, that participants can claim a badge each time they finish a thing. They're all a little bit unique and you'll know whether it's a badge for thing one or thing two or thing three. They've been created to be a little bit unique for each thing. And you can actually use those badges if you wanted to, to put uh, perhaps on your LinkedIn profile or, you know, you can do with them what you will. But we just thought that for some people that sort of, um, motivate, that sort of reward is a motivation. It's sort of something to collect and something to um, reward participants. So you do need to sign up for a Credly account. You'll get prompted to do that the first time you um, go to claim a badge. Um, but after that, then it's quite a straightforward process. It's just a sort of a click-through process to claim your badge for each thing. And we've got a link for claiming badges from each of the discussion boards and each of those thing web pages. So it's quite easy to say, well, done my thing, now I'll go and claim my badge. So it's no charge or anything like that, of course. But we just thought it was one way we might be able to offer some sort of reward and motivation. It's, as I said before, it's a little bit hard for an organisation like Anne's, but this was something we could do relatively straightforward. And a question, is there, any, is there a way to see the names of people from your own institution or organisation who've registered for the kickoff webinar? <laughs> just a note, currently there are over 750 people registered for the webinar. What we could do, that's a good question actually, for the community group leaders, I'll just need to check about the privacy issues uh, around passing on, but what we could do is perhaps send out to each of the community group leaders, the people who have registered from your information, for your institution. Note though that in some really big institutions such that you may actually have subgroups, groups within groups um, who are registering. So uh, we'll try and do that, uh, send that out so at least you've got the list. One of the, is there a set day of the week when we need to do the things? No, you've, I think, Jerry, we agreed we were going to release them on a Monday. Is that right? Uh, yeah, on, I think it was on a, on a Tuesday, but again, it's, it, this is self-directed, so the new thing will come out once a week. But it may be that it, you know, your group only gets together once a month or once every six weeks and then you sort of discuss 
a few things uh, in one go. So uh, what we try and do though is sort of say, well, if you do a thing a week, then uh, and we have got some breaks built into the program, which you may have noticed on your poster, and I'm looking around behind me. At my <laughs> um, we have built in some breaks there because we acknowledge that there are some really busy periods and holiday periods as well. Mm. Um, but the idea is then that we are all finished by, uh, I think it's about the middle of October, if we do a thing a week with those few breaks uh, factored in. Uh, but of course some people will find that they have a busy period or themselves are on holidays and they may do two or three things in one week and then not do anything for uh, you know, a couple of weeks. So if you do a thing a week, roughly, then you will stay on track to finish middle of October when we sort of wind this program up. As I said, we'll keep the resources available for the long term, but in terms of having this sort of program with webinars and the meetup discussion board, etc., that will wind up at the end of the year. Just uh, showing on the screen at the moment, there's this PDF calendar that shows you the green is the break weeks and roughly what will be, so the thing number, the, the weeks when you need to do it and the, the other one that you can have is a word version so that for your group if it doesn't quite fit with what you're doing then you can you can edit it and change the weeks and also add your catch-up times. You can take out anything. So please download that Word version if you want to create your own. Good question. Um, is there any more information on the topics other than the title? At this stage, because a lot of the topics are, we're still wait. Uh, a lot of movement in the research data sector and some of them, you know, the things won't be done until October or, you know, September, August, October, that sort of time. So some of them we haven't quite finalised the links. We've got what we want to achieve but the links, we have a link for everyone but just we're waiting. So what we could do for the you, for the group organisers, just so you've got a bit more information, um, we might be able to send you out something as well to just give a bit of a an idea what's happening. With the topics, please remember that nothing is set in stone. We've tried to use international examples as well as Australian examples. We've tried to send people literally around the world to have a look at what's happening because data is global and Australia is a global player in data. So, um, but please, you know, particularly for our American, Canadian, and New Zealand counterparts and anybody else who's um, listening, if it doesn't work for you, you can take the general concept of the thing and just substitute something. Um, if you've got something that's really amazing that's happening in your university, uh, again, you might take out the example that we've got, say we've sent you off to University X or uh, Medical Research Y or whatever is the example, but when you contact your group, you might like to say, look, here's the 23 things example, but we've got a fantastic example here you can use this one instead. So please feel free to uh, customise the things as they work best for your group. A question our liaison librarians have asked whether the content would suit researchers, PhD students. Uh, yes, Jennifer, we've had this question a lot. And we think PhD students and researchers, probably asking them to do 23 things, you know, talk about time poor and distracted, those two groups would probably come up at the top. So what you might want to do is you might want to take a few of the things, bundle them together and offer them a, a one hour or one and a half hour short course, which might get people involved but doesn't, doesn't require them to plod their way through the 21 things. Obviously that's only going to work after the things are revealed. Someone did mention to me that they were thinking about doing that. Um, it was to actually do the things themselves. This was somebody I think working in an IT office or a library, I can't recall quite which. But to go through the program themselves and then to cherry pick what they would then bundle into a program for higher degree students and perhaps researchers and, and then tweak the examples for their own organisation and uh, interest areas. So again, I guess adapting the program for a different, slightly different audience and just, as I said, cherry picking the, the activities that they think would be of particular interest. 
I, I'm not sure that there'd be too many, you know, PhDs and researchers that actually want to know a lot about metadata crosswalks. You know, I might be wrong. That might. <laughs> Maybe my passion, but I don't know that it's everybody's <laughs> passion. So my comment would be that there are probably some great activities in there for PhDs and researchers, but perhaps not all of them will be equally um, applicable. And I guess that brings us to well, what about after October? What happens to 23 Things then? After October, uh, the meetup group will keep it open until the end of the year, and then after that, we'll close off the discussions. But we've also got a second poster. The poster that you can see here when you click on it actually has all the dates on it. But we have a second poster that doesn't have dates. And so for next year, the dated poster will come down and the things will be changed so that they'll be similar. I'll just show you, for example, this one, thing one getting started, will be the same, but it will probably stop there. So the last bit about sharing will be taken off, so the things will still be there, but it will simply stop at, here it is. And you can actually use those any way you like, and you can download them and you can change the examples. Just on whether or not you've got a, something. if something happens, a catalyst event happens at your institution, let's just say you've been asked to support a new research data policy or something, oh, you're going to introduce data management plans, that's not until thing 15 and yet we're doing it really soon, contact us and we're happy to, to release the, that thing to you for you to use or change or to give you some ideas to get started. So don't feel that you as community organisers have to wait all the way through. If there's something that you can see that would really make uh, learning better for your groups, contact us and, and we'll send you the information. We are asking you not to you know, repost, etc., to try and keep the excitement of the things rolling out each week. But if you need it, we're more than happy to share it early. We've got quite a number of people who have put some ideas about how they're thinking their group might run. At the webinar next week, um, we've got a few people who are just going to very quickly pop up and say, oh, this is our group, this is how we're, you know, thinking of running our group, so that people who are involved in groups can also give a bit of feedback as well, and they can help you with running your own group. Uh, next week's webinar, we'll go through Meetup and we'll be saying the same thing that we've said to you, that people can choose to use it or not choose not use it, it's um, entirely up to you. People could do, and we think this is going to happen, people will do all 23 things all by themselves and we will never know. If they don't contribute to Meetup, if they don't claim a badge, if they don't join a group, and that's fine. But we're hoping to enrich our already very large community by using this. Question, I think I'll, I expect I'll know more about how our groups will work after our first meeting on March the 9th and I think that's probably the case for many people. Once you've got the group set up and you think, oh yeah, this is probably how we'll work, it'll obviously change as time goes on, but um, if you could just drop us an email, that'd be great and then we can um, make sure that the, the community groups page is just up to date, I think it's, yep, the community groups, this one here, I'm just changing it now on the screen, so just making sure that it's up to date and adding any or changing any information. For example, some of you might have said, oh, well, you're thinking of running it this way, whatever way, then monthly until October for CSIRO is planning a kickoff one and then monthly. You may want to change that to something and just let us know. Jerry. Oh, and just my other comment was to that um, really we're putting the, posting the information up about community groups so that others who may be interested in joining your group are aware of it. So if don't have concrete details, if things do tweak and change as you go along, that's fine. We're really just trying to use this as a mechanism to connect individuals to groups or for people to see, oh, there is no group in my institution or my area, perhaps I'll start one. So mm. uh, we're not, it's not that we're want to keep tight tabs on what you're doing, it's just really is a mechanism to share that information um, across the community. A uh, question from Mary who's just said, how do people join my community group? If your group is up on this page, <clears throat> you'll notice that there's, I'll just use the slider, uh, you'll notice that we've included people's 
uh, email addresses. So I guess they'll they'll email you, or they may know that you meet at a particular place at a particular time, and they may just come along. Yeah, we envisage that. You know, but that's why we asked for a contact person <laughs> or a couple of contact people and an email address so that people can connect with you via email at least initially and uh, and then um, you know you can communicate how you wish um, after your group gets going so it's it's as I said it's really this is like a, a matching service rather than a mechanism for people to actually you know connect directly through that list and Ma and Mary just said uh, that's okay but what if it's not what if the information isn't online then I guess um, you would need to pass it out maybe by email lists um, for groups that you are associated with or you know contact a few people that you know might be um, uh, might be interested in it and then they can pass it on uh, thanks, Catherine. She's just said at the March 1st webinar we'll highlight how to join a group. So we'll make sure that this is um, this page is up to date. So if you could actually go in that page and just check that the information that's up there is still current and it appears as you want it to appear and just email Jerry or any of us. Uh, the contact details are on the website. Uh, for any email that you can use and, and it'll get to us. Somebody's made a comment here, uh, they're using an internal staff only wiki for the group so it won't be accessible to the wider institutional community and you know whatever works for your group. The main thing is that we would really like to be in touch with you because for some of you this will be the first and only time that we interact with you uh, you'll go off, you'll do your groups, you'll do your things, and we won't we won't know necessarily how you're going. So we're really keen on um, getting some feedback as we go through. Um, I'd like to th particularly thank you all again for volunteering to be a group leader or thinking about being a group leader. And if we can provide any help whatsoever, um, please yell out, and we'll provide information if you need more resources, if you notice something's broken or or you've got a fantastic example that you think could be included. Don't forget as community leaders if you need a sneak peek at one of the other things that we're not up to yet, please contact us <clears throat> and we'll send you out the details particularly and then you can give us some feedback if it worked or didn't work before we actually get to the thing. So again, everyone, thank you so much for uh, being part of 23 Things. Um, it's just been the most amazing experience for Anne's and for all of the people who've worked on it. And um, we'd particularly like to give a shout out to Sue Cook um, of the CSIRO in Western Australia. Sue has just supported us all the way through and she's been a part of the, the group team um, who's been putting this together and she's had some fantastic ideas. So there's a big team of us here in Anne's who have been working on it. Uh, Jane Fraser and uh, Catherine Unsworth, Rowan Brownlee, Jerry, Susanna, myself and Sue have been the ones who have sort of been pulling it together but there's been a really big team. So. Um, it, it's been a great experience and we're looking forward to all of you creating community groups that are just going to make research data an absolutely go-to occupation for the years to come. And thank you to everybody and I know there's quite a few of you who are in this webinar today who suggested activities, links, examples and things. So it's, it's been a real community, real community event.